So if you were in the market for a tractor and you're teetering back and forth on the fence of whether you should get a cab tractor or an open station tractor, then this video is for you because I have found the number one way to justify the purchase of the cab tractor. So there's been other videos done before. There's tons of videos out there about pros and cons of the cab tractor versus the open station. I don't like to look at them as pros and cons. I look at them as complaints and benefits because even the complaints, I guess it just depends on how you look at it. I don't really see them as a con. I can see the complaint. So I've compiled a list of complaints and benefits. And we'll go over those before we get into how I justified purchasing the cab. So one of the first complaints is always how long it takes to get in and out of an open station versus a cab tractor. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna do both. We're gonna open the door, pretend it's an open station, time how long it takes to get in, and then we'll simply shut the door, time the other way. And we'll see if it really makes that big of a difference. Okay, here we go. That didn't really take very long. Now, is it harder or take longer to get out? Easy enough. Let's see how much difference it makes with the door open, simulating an open cab. Okay, here we go. Maybe a little faster, one, two seconds tops. I don't think that's enough of a reason not to buy the cab. So the next complaint that people often have is it decreases your visibility because of these extra poles right here. So let's get in and see how much of a visibility difference it really makes. Okay, let's get in here and see what this really looks like. Here's the view looking straight out view out the side, view out the back, view out of the left side, and this is the complaint that a lot of people have. I don't see that being any different than what you have in your car that you look at every day. Cars have bigger blind spots than this. You are just surrounded by glass in this. And if something as small as this is obstructing your view while driving a tractor from being able to do the work that you need to do, well, you may be right. Maybe you want an open station. I don't think these being here is enough reason not to buy a cab tractor. Now, of course, if you look up, you can't look above you, but if you buy a canopy to go over it to keep the sun off of you, you can't see out the top anyway. Unless you're waiting for a meteor to fall on you, probably not much above you you need to see. The next complaint people usually have is there's not a breeze. They like working on an open station because they like the breeze. They like being in the sunshine. They like being outside. I have a solution for that. The breeze feels wonderful. Still not enough to not justify buying a cab tractor. Plus, I have AC in here. I could turn that on and be cool. I don't need the breeze. The wind just blows stuff in your face anyway. The next common complaint is that you can break the glass and it's expensive to repair. And a lot of people break this piece of glass out when they're putting their loader on or off or they hit a stick and one of the doors break off. My solution to that, pay attention to what you're doing. Accidents will happen, I get it, but I haven't hit my glass with anything yet. And I have heard the argument that with heat and AC comes higher maintenance costs. I'm not really sure where that comes from. I did have an initial problem with the vents not opening and closing correctly. The tractor was new, it was under warranty. I took it in, they had it fixed. So solution to that, use it often, take it in, have your warranty work done. Another common complaint is that you can't hear people around you while you're working, somebody screaming at you. And that's kind of true. 
but I don't think people are buying these tractors for homesteads that are working around a lot of other people. I think they're out in the field, they're bush hogging, they have their cell phone with them. If something, if somebody really needs them, they're not used on commercial job sites where there's a lot of people around you and a lot of safety concerns. These are usually kind of out in the open and you can always open the door or you can use it as an excuse not to listen to somebody. Not that I would ever do that. Another common complaint is that there is a low clearance or you can't store it in a building the way that you can one with the ROPS. So if you look at the specifications on almost any tractor, any open station tractor versus its cab tractor equivalent, you're gonna find that the cab tractor is actually shorter than the open station tractor with the ROPS up. Now I agree that you can lower the ROPS down to get it into a tighter storage spot, but I don't wanna keep getting out and putting the ROPS down all the time. But the cab does kind of cause a problem when it comes to the lower obstructions. As you can see, I purposely drove under this low hanging branch here just to show you what it can do and the problems. But if I didn't have the cab on, that would have been smacking me in my pretty little face. And you can always trim your trees or just pay attention to what you're doing. I probably shouldn't have done that. That's gonna scratch the top of that for sure. Okay, back in the tractor again, because this is one of the greatest things about this cab. It is super quiet. The engine's running right now. You can hear it, but it's more of a low drone, maybe I would call it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start driving and listen to what it sounds like in here, and then we'll open the door to see what it would sound like from an open cab station. Okay. Here's what I hear cruising along at one or two miles an hour. You go to open the door. That is a major hearing difference. And I'm already losing my hearing and my wife threatens to buy me hearing aids. So added hearing protection. And probably the biggest complaint about purchasing a tractor with a cab on it is the cost to purchase the cab. But that's kind of the point of this whole video, how I can justify that. I think at the time I purchased this one, this is a Coyote CK3510. I think the cab was I don't know, six to $8,000, somewhere in there. So they, they do get expensive, but they are worth it. So let's talk about some of the benefits because there's a lot of really good benefits to owning a cab. First benefit, let me show you. These controls right here, heat and AC. Enough said. And I had it as another benefit, but in the same line as the heat and AC, got radio with Bluetooth, got speakers all around you, auxiliary switches, cigarette lighter for those that smoke, auxiliary power plugins. So for anybody that says, I don't want a radio, I'll just listen to my earbuds. Fine, put your earbuds in. You can connect it right to the radio. Okay. I don't know what number I'm on, or if I was even using numbers. I don't think I was. Next benefit, you can work in any kind of weather. You can work in the rain. If you need to finish the job and it starts raining, you can get it done the same day. You can work in the snow in a t-shirt. You can work in the extreme heat with the AC and you're not exposed to all the elements. So this would have stretched in it a little bit but it keeps all the dust and all the dirt and all the pollen and everything else off of you, which in turn means you don't have to bathe as often or you don't have to do your laundry as often. So either way, you're saving detergent, you're saving water and you're saving electricity. So if you care about the planet, you'll get a cab. So let's talk about lights and mirrors. If you have an open station tractor, those mirrors are mounted somewhere down in here in your way. 
those lights are going to be mounted way back here on your ROPS bar and shine right down on the back of your head. Up here, it gets them way out in front of the work, provides excellent light out there in front of you. And these mirrors are in a perfect position when you're sitting in there to be able to see behind you. The next big benefit is no bird. Yep, you heard me right. No bird. I have seen video after video of people who come out and their tractors left outside, no cab, no roof, entire tractor covered in bird droppings. And that's just gross. I don't want to clean that up before I get in and do any kind of work. But also what the cab will do, because it has a roof on it, all of your controls are covered and protected. So that will equate to less maintenance because there won't be parts re being replaced in here as much. Your seat won't wear out. They actually, I still have the plastic on this one and they're cloth seats in a lot of the cab tractors, at least the Coyote ones. But all of this in here stays cleaner. There's a lot less dirt, no rain, nothing getting down in your controls. My gauges aren't all fogged up. So aside from the bird droppings, if you come out in the winter time or after it's been raining, you're going to sit down and you're going to get soggy butt. Nothing worse than working all day on a tractor when you have soggy butt, when it's super hot, super wet, or super cold. And then one of the last benefits is less aftermarket parts. You see it time and time again. Somebody buys an open station tractor and then they buy lights and then they buy mirrors and then they buy an aftermarket cab or they buy a canopy to go over the top of them to keep them out of the sun. All that adds up over time when you could have just gotten the cab to begin with. So that leads us to the number one way that I justified buying this cab. Beside my wife just telling me to do it and to quit whining about it, my number one reason, HDHPs, high deductible health plans. So let me explain that a little bit. Medical expenses are out of this world expensive. And apparently I have developed allergies. So dust and pollen and anything else causes me to have to go to a doctor. There's a doctor visit. Then I have to get allergy prescriptions. There's a cost. So why not just avoid all that? Get a tractor that's got a cab on it, that's got heat and AC, that's got multiple filters in it that you can change out to keep all that off of you. I already mentioned it keeps it off your clothes, so I'm saving the planet. But that's just the beginning of the health care costs. And for those of you who don't know what a high deductible health plan is, that pretty much states that you pay a small premium monthly, but then you pretty much pay for all of your own medical expenses until you hit a certain dollar amount. So my deductible on my health plan is pretty close to the cost of this cab tractor. Let's not forget about bees and hornets and wasps and anything else that comes out of the ground or out of the tree or out of a bush, out of a nest, whatever it is, and stings you, that hurts. And if you're allergic to them, you're going to the ER. That's an automatic couple thousand dollars. So I'm lumping safety into my number one justification of healthcare costs and HDHPs. Because if you're looking at this, if you have a ROP system in the back and you have a rollover, that ROP system is the only thing that is gonna protect you. Where if you have a cab, you have four posts that are gonna keep you safe. Yeah, you may break the glass and you gotta replace that, but that's still gonna be a lot cheaper than a hospital visit or death. So let's not forget the low hanging branches. I would hate for something like that to come by and swing out and smack me in the face. Again, look, I can't damage that. And I do know of somebody who was bush hogging a field, hit a big bump, bounced off their tractor and landed underneath their own bush hog. That wouldn't happen with cab. So speaking of bush hogs or rotor tillers or anything else that you might be pulling behind you, those throw up a lot of debris. Something can come up from underneath there, a piece of metal, piece of wood, piece of glass, smack you in the back of the head, ER visit, if you're lucky. I'll admit it, I'm a big old baby when it comes to being out in the cold. Don't like it, don't wanna be in it, don't see any need to be out in it. But have you ever seen what frostbite looks like? 
it's gross. I don't want frostbite on my face or my fingers because I'm out plowing snow in the middle of winter when I could be sitting in here with a t-shirt on, enjoying the, enjoying the heat, enjoying the view, having a good time, getting some seat time. And taking all of this healthcare stuff into consideration, this was my ultimate deciding factor. And me and my wife did have this conversation. If you see this scar right here, now I know by looking at me, you're gonna think uh, he got it wrestling alligators or wrestling bears or doing something dangerous, like breaking up a bar fight in a biker bar. But nope, it was simple skin cancer. I know what that procedure cost. I know what was involved in it. I know the big scar I got from it. I'm a little bit lighter skinned. I'm a lot bit lighter skinned. So I get sunburned on cloudy days. I don't need to be out in the open. Anything I can do to protect myself, I'll put sunblock on to ride in the tractor because the sun does shine through the glass. So there you have it. If you are on that fence, think of all those benefits of this cab tractor, but mostly think about you're gonna spend six to $8,000 to put that cab onto that tractor, but over but if you finance your tractor, like many of us will do, that all goes right into the monthly payment. And you spread that over five, six, seven years at a very, very low interest rate, that is by far going to offset one ER visit a year, one every two years while you're financing that tractor of medical expenses that you're not gonna have to pay. That alone, with the pain, the suffering, the worry, the recovery, the cost, everything else that goes with it, cab tractors where it's at. Get a cab tractor. Save your life, save the planet.